Sup dogs, my name's Zioli and I'm a hobbyist game developer. My game is called Caster's Trap, and it is a puzzle horror game. It's about a kid, or more like a teenager, who enters an abandoned cabin, only to soon find out that there may have been magic that once existed in our world. And as he dive deeper and deeper into it, he may start to see that this cabin isn't exactly abandoned. The game is expected to be about two hours long in gameplay to have several true endings, which may sound confusing, but I'll talk about that more in a future video. This is my very first game that I am tackling with a high production in mind, so I thought it'd be pretty interesting to show you guys my toolkit and what it looks like behind the scenes as a hobbyist game dev. First up, the engine I'm using to develop the game. It's called RPG Maker, MZ to be specific, and it's an engine I've been using since I was roughly 13 years old, so something I've been on and off with over 15 years, back in its earlier versions called RPG Maker XP. And I know, RPG Maker has been pretty notorious for having produced some rather bad games, but at the same time, it's also popular for being known to have produced a lot of great games. Now, this may be somewhat of a hot take, but I would call RPG Maker the Squarespace, or the Wix.com for game engines, because it honestly do have some pretty intuitive templates, where for example, if I want to show text, all I gotta do is click here, click here, click here, and ta-da! Now I can show text. So at face value, it is a very basic engine, but if you are someone who's interested in coding, or if you are someone who's interested in JavaScript, then this game engine actually has a whole load of cool things that you can do. The engine did cost me $70 as it did just release in the fall of 2020. The version prior to that, MV, also cost $70. But, these two engines go on sale very, very often, where if you're interested, MZ, just because it's still brand new, probably won't go below $60, but MV will go below $20. If you don't have a budget, I would go for MZ, but if you do, I would wait for MV to go on a good sale. If you're interested in a tutorial series, or to see what I can do with the engine, I have some links in the descriptions below. Moving on from here, it is very important to have a management system. So next up, we're going to talk about notes. There's not a whole lot to say about having a software for you to manage your notes, except for the fact that you should have one. Previously, I would use Microsoft Documents, and then I found OneNote. And what's really cool is that it is on a cloud system, so if you're working on your desktop, but then you want to work on your laptop, maybe you're going down to a friend's place, or maybe in a world where COVID didn't exist, you're at a coffee shop or a library, then you could just open up this application and all your notes will be there. It's got your notebooks, which is essentially like your books, and then it kind of divides into chapters. And you can do a whole lot of things from writing notes, uploading pictures, creating tables, highlighting, drawing. It's really neat, honestly. Now I will admit, I'm not perfect, and by all means, if you're new to this sort of thing, then you guys won't be perfect too. I also use my sticky notes, and yes, of course, like everyone else, it's a huge mess. There is a pretty neat software called Trello. I've heard many indie devs using this software. For what I understand, it's like a calendar plus sticky notes. So you kind of have your way of setting goals for the week and seeing how you're progressing and where you're falling behind. I think it's really cool, something I'll probably consider using on in the future, maybe in my next project. But for now, I'm just gonna stick to OneNotes and my mess of sticky notes. Moving on from here, let's dive into something a little bit more fun, which I think is digital art. For art, it comes in two forms for me, that is digitally drawing, as well as pixel art, 
For pixel art, I use a program called Ace Sprite. It's a very popular program for pixel art, and a lot of professional pixel artists on YouTube actually use the program. It goes for $15, however, there is a free version, but from the free version, you will have to compile it yourself, which does exist somewhere on the internet, so I think you could YouTube it or Google it, or maybe it's even on its website. Art in general is something I'm new to, so I followed the YouTubers Mort Mort and Pixel Pete to help develop my skills. As for digitally drawing, I do use the Wacom Intuos. It's a great introductory tool, and I actually bought it on Black Friday. I managed to grab it for $60, but by OSRP, it is $80. What's very neat about the tablet is that the stylus on the tablet feels very close to pen on paper which I think is really cool. The challenging part is having that hand-eye coordination because you're looking up at the screen as opposed to where you're actually drawing. That one does take a bit of practice, so I would say that if you guys do have an iPad laying around, I would consider buying the Apple Pen and trying it out that way instead. The Apple Pen does cost quite the hefty amount of money, but I'm sure you can find a trusty off-brand off of Amazon that costs like a fraction of the price. The only thing to note there is that although you may be seeing where you're drawing, you will be drawing on glass, and because of that, it will be a little bit more slippery. There is a third software that I do use, it's called GIMP. Most people identify GIMP as the free version of Photoshop, I do find it to come in handy in some cases, but for the most part, I don't really use it at all. Like digital art, I'm new to music, except I haven't exactly touched music just yet. So I'm probably not the best person to recommend the equipment, but here's what I've been using. To edit sound effects, I've been using Audacity. It's a pretty well-known software and it's very recommended for being both free and easy to use. It's something I've been using for the longest time, so I have a decent familiarity with it. When it comes to making music or creating music effects, I've been using Beatbox.co. It's a free website with a lot of different instruments. The only thing is that from what I've heard off of professional musicians on YouTube, it's that it's very very basic for what it does and it can be quite limiting but to be honest as a person who's just brand new into music and doesn't exactly know what he's doing just yet it kind of works perfectly for me the thing is that it does sound very midi but hey being a free software how can i say no <laughs> outside of that i do have a kalimba it has 70 keys so roughly two octaves and it's really fun to kind of just pluck around with it till I hear something that sounds kind of good. Typically, I find myself running into a lot of Zelda melodies, but at the same time, that's kind of a good sign because of something so iconic such as Zelda can be played on something so simple as on a kalimba, then there's potential there. It costs roughly $20 off of Amazon, and I would highly recommend picking up an instrument just to get that little practice in. If you're someone with some musical talent, then I would probably just go straight into buying a MIDI keyboard. A lot of them comes with DAWs, Digital Audio Workstations, and if you do have one, then you can probably replace Audacity with that. The one I have is the Nectar Impact LX25 Plus. I actually got it as a Christmas gift, but from what I've seen, it tends to go on sale down to roughly $100 from $150. So if you're interested, I heard good things about this one, but of course, do your own research to figure out what works best for you. As a free alternative, I heard that GarageBand on an iPad works exceptionally well, and in my opinion, I think that's great and worth digging into if you do have an iPad yourself. So that pretty much sums up all the tools that I use for game development. Depending what you're going for, you can acquire all of those equipment for free, Game Engine, if you're interested in something like Unity, 2D or 3D, that thing is free, but it is a bit of a learning curve. RPG Maker is something that I use and have used in the past and have grown to love, so I didn't mind spending the $70 for it when it released. For artwork, you can use GIMP, or if you're willing to, compile a sprite. A sprite is an excellent tool for pixel art. GIMP is a decent tool for pixel art in my opinion but better use as a Photoshop clone in a sense. 
If you already have an iPad, then you could just download a free drawing app. It works exceptionally well for most people, but if not, and you're on a little bit more of a budget, then I would recommend a Wacom. Again, it cost me $60 when it was on sale, otherwise it's $80 and it is the cheapest thing out there. Clipart Studio comes free with it, in addition to a couple of other software if you're interested. For notes, Microsoft OneNotes keeps me completely satisfied, although I am interested in looking into Trello. As far as I can tell, it has a free version and a paid version. I don't really know the difference because I haven't dug deep enough, but OneNote does a spectacular job as is. For music, you got Beatbox.co and Audacity. I'm assuming you already have your own microphone to create your own sound effects, or you're just downloading samples off of freesound.org. You can use Audacity to edit all of that, or you could just create music and music effects off of Beatbox.co, which is completely for free. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Consider hitting that like button if you enjoyed. Comment some of your thoughts down below. And if you're interested in going on a development journey with me, I have a playlist full of what I call dev life vlogs. They're called dev life vlogs because it's both a mix of my development journey as well as what goes on in my life. I have a lot of fun there, so I hope you guys manage to stop by sometime. Otherwise, if you're interested in RPG Maker and are looking for a tutorial series, I also got your back. I'll see y'all in the next one. Till then, ladder.